Hello guys, welcome to the Parson series and uh, in continuation of the vascular disorders of the retina, we'll be doing the venous retinopathies today. So I hope you have already gone through the CRAO, the BRVO and today we are starting with the venous testis retinopathy. Now this is a well-defined clinical entity that consists of unilateral disc edema with variable retinal vascular changes which are occurring in young adults. Now you have to keep in mind whenever you are doing these kind of things that a clinical scenario because most probably you will be receiving a clinical scenario. So this patient will be a young adult 20 to 40 years of age. Initially the symptoms are very vague you are having a unilateral disc edema and uh, we also um, this we also have the fogginess of the vision so this patient will not say that i am having a unilateral disc edema the patient will usually come with a fogginess now the entire vascular abnormality may be minimal or presently or it can also be presenting as marked engorgement dilatation tortuous veins hemorrhages at the posterior pole extending into the retinal periphery now i hope you know what is uh, your posterior pole it is actually the macula visual acuity remains good and vitreous hemorrhage is never present now this is very important when you are uh, suspecting a CRAO and when you are suspecting a CRVO. So in CRAO the patient is completely blind, almost completely blind. But in cases of CRVO, visual acuity remains good and we are not having the vitreous hemorrhage. Uh, if you do the neuroophthalmological examination that is negative and uh, fluorescein angiography shows the venous stasis with the delayed venous drainage. So an entire you know, clinical scenario could be made. Suppose a male patient 35 years old coming with a unilateral fogginess and uh, on the fundus examination we have marked engorgement, dilatation of the tortuous veins, we have the retinal hemorrhages, visual acuity is good, you cannot see any vitreous hemorrhage. When we do the neuroophthalmological examination it is negative. While the fluorescein angiography shows the venous stasis with the delayed venous drain, the whole of the question is formed, right? So there is generally no permanent visual defect. Systemic steroids are occasionally used, but the disease can safely be followed without neurodiagnostic study in a healthy adult where there are no abnormal systemic or neuroophthalmological findings. Now, what about the steroids? Whether you should give or whether you should wait. So steroids should be withheld unless there is a macular edema. Again, an important thing. See, what is important about steroids is that there are always definite norms. Either you don't give it or you give it or you have to withheld it. So here you are withholding unless there is macular edema. So I can say that macular edema is that indication of starting the steroids. When this picture simulates that of the central venous thrombosis. So you could have the central venous thrombosis in the options there probably resulting from phlebitis, right? The cause is unknown. Although increased level of circulating IgM have been reported. Essential difference between the venous stasis retinopathy and the central venous thrombosis is that in the former there is a stasis of the venous circulation in the absence of ischemia of the retina. So um, another important thing that could be provided in the question is that the IgM levels are also high. Now you could be thinking about two things. We can have the venous stasis retinopathy or we can also have the uh, what you call as the central venous thrombosis and uh, what you have to think is that in both, uh, both of the cases we have got the stasis in the venous circulation but the difference is that there will be absence of the ischemia if there is a uh, in the former there is a stasis of the venous circulation in the absence of the ischemia of the retina. So if I have the venous stasis retinopathy, I will not have the ischemia of the retina that you have to men, uh, see. Now, if I talk about the venous thrombosis per se, it, this will occur in the elderly people. So now try to differentiate that was have occurring in a young adult. This is in the elderly people who are already having some cardiovascular disease or the glaucoma. And the obstruction is usually in the central vein that will be behind the lamina cribrosa. And uh, why? Because the vein is sharing common sheath with the artery so that two are affected by the same sclerotic process. You know, this is again important thing. And that means a person who is having the affecting uh, the artery, there, there are high chances that the vein is also involved because of the common sheath. At other times, uh, the patient can be having arteriosclerosis, block may be peripheral, it could be at the bifurcation, right? So, uh, this is particularly prone to occur in the suprotemporal vein. So, when I am talking about the venous thrombosis, it is mostly found in the uh, suprotemporal veins. In the young people, it may be due to now mostly it, this is occurring in the elderly people. They say that suppose it is occurring in young people, then there can be one reason. It can be due to the infective uh, periphlebitis in which a branch of the central vein is actually affected or it could be any local cause. We can have chronic glaucoma, orbital cellulitis and facial erysipelas. In all the cases, condition to be regarded as 
as a danger signal and constitutional investigation and treatment should be uh, certainly taken. So, obviously thrombosis is always dangerous and uh, it should be taken as an alarming sign and symptom whenever and wherever you are getting. Now, we come to the CRVO. Now, if I talk about CRVO, all the veins of the retina are become enormously engorged with the blood and extremely tortuous and uh, retina is covered with the hemorrhages. Now, if you remember in the previous, we had learned that hemorrhage is not found. So, if you are getting the hemorrhages, we are not thinking about the venous stasis retinopathy, then we are thinking about the CRVO and uh, sight is again impaired. In that cases also, the sight was not impaired, but here sight is also impaired. We are having the hemorrhages also and obviously, uh, they are not as severe and not as elaborate as in CRO, but certainly both are there and uh, we will have the tortuous new vessels. We have a lot of ischemia because you know, CRVO is of two types. 75% cases are non-ischemic variety, but 25% cases are ischemic variety. And uh, these ischemic varieties may be actually having the neovascularization and uh, in cases of the neovascularization, you will have a lot of hemorrhages. While in about 75% of the cases, there is no ischemia. Why? Because we have got the collateral circulation which is uh, formed there. Eventually, the retina becomes a trophic. Uh, we have the fine pigmentary changes. The prognosis is rendered worse uh, by the secondary glaucoma. So, this secondary glaucoma which occurs in 2 to 3 months due to the neovascularization at the angle of anterior chamber, I think you people know its name. This is your neovascular glaucoma neovascular glaucoma and what is the specific name of this neovascular glaucoma? It is your 90 day or the 100 day glaucoma. This glaucoma is called as a 90 day glaucoma or the 100 day glaucoma because of the fact that it takes about 2 to 3 months for this glaucoma to develop. All right. Now see this is actually uh, the typical splashed tomato appearance. Can you see a lot of hemorrhages here? So this is a typical splashed tomato appearance. Um, if you look at this picture, I think the picture that I have shown you in the classes is much better. Uh, this is also a picture, but uh, most of the time I feel that the uh, images which I actually use in the past are the best one, but this picture is not that, you know, um, uh, stimulating as I showed you in the class. This is the splash tomato appearance which is uh, found in cases of the ischemic CRVO. Right now, coming to the other one, uh, the BRVO. So, if I talk about the BRVO, BRVO means just a branch. So, here what is happening, just a single branch of the central vein is blocked, edema and uh, hemorrhages, if I talk about, they are limited to only that area which is supplied by this branch. In these cases, the visual defect is also partial, uh, but not exactly sectorial as it was in the cases of artery. So, one important difference between the BRVO and BRVO is that in cases of the BRVO, we were get, getting the sectoral defect, but in cases of the BRVO, we are not getting sectoral defect, it is partial only. Now, if I talk about the prognosis, so the prognosis for the central vision is better and uh, unfortunately what happens uh, because it is common in the supratemporal veins and the macula is also lying on the temporal side, so it is frequently involving the macula. Uh, eyes with intact or complete very foveal uh, capillary arcades have a better visual prognosis than the eyes with the incomplete arcades which can be seen by the angiography and um, we can even have the secondary glaucomas that can occur due to the um, branch thrombosis. So, we have seen the uh, venous retinopathy, we have seen the venous uh, thrombosis, we have seen the CRO and then we, uh, CRVO and then we also have seen the BRVO. All right. Now, uh, look at the treatment part. If you look at uh, the treatment part, I would say that no treatment is effective in the cases of venous occlusion once the blockhead is already complete. If there is widespread capillary occlusion, then we can do panphotocoagulation, right? And uh, because you have a lot of new vascularization, so obviously it will be applicable um, not for the vision, but uh, especially to prevent the complications like neovascular glaucoma, rubiosis iridis, widespread capillary occlusion is also associated with the cotton wool spots, uh, delayed uh, AV transit time, large vessel leakage and retinal edema. Now, in the branch uh, vein occlusion, destruction of the areas of the poor perfusion may relieve the persistent edema and also inhibit the neovascularization. But the important thing is that the photocoagulation should not be done until most of the intraretinal blood is absorbed and um, Another important thing is that we can give anti-VEGF. See, whenever 
we have neovascularization, there is always, you know, scope of giving this anti-VEGF therapy. So, we can give as an intravitreal injection and now this is an established treatment to improve the visual recovery and prevent late complications. So, I hope again a very fruitful session where we have compared four um, venous uh, diseases. We had the venous uh, stasis retinopathy, the central vein uh, thrombosis, uh, then CRVO and VRVO. Not only you should know how to compare between these, you should also know how to compare these with the CRVO because uh, both of them are the vascular diseases of the retina and uh, <clears throat> they have differing somewhat in the severity, in the signs and symptoms and therefore the mode of treatment are different but initial presentation may be same. So at times you get confused but uh, whenever it is coupled with the fundus image, I think that becomes very easy. There you will get a cherry red spot and here you will get lot of hemorrhages. So I hope you have clear insight and uh, in case of any problem you can always uh, DM me, you can write it in the comment section. I frequently go through all the comment sections to see that uh, you have understood or not and uh, if there is any um, you know doubt you can always post me. Thank you and happy ophthalmology.